Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this past month in February 2023 has been filled with different app updates. So there's more to talk about this month and many major app updates. We'll start off with WhatsApp. Now, if you're using WhatsApp, as many people are around the world, WhatsApp added picture in picture for video calls this past week. So just like when you're on a video call with FaceTime, you can now have picture in picture on WhatsApp. Also, a future version of WhatsApp will allow users to edit messages for up to 15 minutes after sending them. This is similar to iMessage. You can see the different information here on WA Beta Info, and it gives you up to 15 minutes to actually edit whatever message you're in. You'll have an edit option, and then you can edit that message. That should be rolling out hopefully in the near future. Google had some nice updates this week, so if you subscribe to Google One and you use Google Photos, Google Photos now supports that magic eraser feature that we've had on the Pixel for a while on the iPhone in the Photos app. So if you go into Google One and you subscribe to it, you can see here that it says extra Google Photos editing features. And so this rolled out yesterday and brings in different Google Photo editing features such as easily removing the things in the background with magic eraser. Now it doesn't work on all photos. It works on some devices. So if you go into your photos app and if we go into this photo, tap the three lines here, and maybe there's something in the background we want to get rid of. We should have an option in the future. It's not showing up for me just yet. I've tried this a few times and I am a Google one subscriber with the latest updates, but we should be able to remove the background here simply. However, it doesn't seem to work on all photos. So let me know if that's active for you yet. We're seeing more and more things get integrated with AI with things such as open AI and chat GPT, which is now being rolled into Bing edge and Skype from Microsoft with the latest updates. It's now starting to integrate that into those apps. And you can see that here, there's technically a wait list for this, but you can sign in and join the wait list. And it says you're one step closer to the new Bing. Sign in a personal account to join the wait list and experience your AI powered co-pilot for the web. So you'll see more and more of that across Microsoft services and Google will have their own as well. But I'll leave a link in the description if you want to sign up for that. And maybe you're on a computer, the same thing goes. You can sign up for a wait list as well. Now, for a while, Twitter has actually now made people pay to be verified. Facebook is following suit or Meta has followed Twitter this week, announcing a new Meta verified subscription service for Facebook and Instagram. It will be $11.99 per month for web verification and $14.99 per month for iPhone and iPad verification. So if you're on Instagram and you've wanted to be verified for quite some time, that's something that should be available fairly soon. I know it should start rolling out very soon. I haven't seen it yet. I looked for it myself, but it should be there for Instagram and Facebook if you're using those and you want to integrate that. Now, Twitter this week said it will be removing text-based two-factor authentication from non-Twitter blue paying subscribers. Instead though, you can use an authenticator app, which is a little bit better to generate codes for you, or you can use a security key both of which are more secure than two-factor authentication using SMS. SMS costs money and that makes sense why they're actually charging for this. So you can see the two-factor authentication options, text message, authentication app, security key, and then of course you have your backup codes if you enable those. So there's different ways to sign into this, pick one and then you can sign up for it. So if you're upset about not being able to log in with two-factor using text, switch that over to an authenticator app, but just make sure it's a legitimate authenticator Authenticator app. As this week, it was found that there was an authenticator app that turned out to be a scam app or a fraudulent app that would actually track your codes and send it back to the app creator. The app has since been removed, but it actually slipped past Apple and was in the app store for some time. It was brought to their attention due to people signing up with two factor authentication because of Twitter. So that's something that just be careful. I would use a reputable one, whether that's the app one password that I use. I use that for different passwords and you can use that as well with two factor codes. You'll see here one password, not just one password, but you can use Google authenticator, Microsoft's authenticator. Just make sure you use a well-known one that will work for you. Apple updated a few different apps this past week. And the first one is an all new app they introduced called car keys tests. This is for automotive manufacturers to help them add digital car key features to their vehicles. Currently, there's some cars that are available, such as BMW, 
Hyundai, Kia, and Genesis that you can use your phone as the actual car key without an app. You can use it directly from the wallet app. However, with the car keys tests, it will help them implement this with more manufacturers. However, you can't really use this. You can download it, but you can't get past the login unless you have an MFI license to use this. So they actually introduced it, but it's nice that they have this. Hopefully we'll see this rolled out to more and more manufacturers that actually use digital keys. This just makes it easier to carry one less thing. Apple's Apple Store app actually got a big update this past week. And if we go into the Apple Store app, give it just a moment here. Now we can actually create lists and more easily share them with other people. So maybe if we want to go into, well, we'll just pick the first thing here the black unity sport loop. And if we tap the saved button in the upper right, we can then add this to a list. I created a list, save it to my list, and then I can share that. You can find that in the bag here in the bottom right. And you'll see here, it says all saved by you. So you can see the different things I have here and we'll go to see all, and then we can share it. And then you can share it to friends. You could airdrop it copy it and everything else. So it's nice that they've made this as a quick way, maybe to share a gift list you're creating for someone or something else. Apple released their Safari technology preview this past week as well. They seem to release one of these every week or two. And this particular one, again, is a beta test program. You can go and download this for macOS Ventura or macOS Monterey. And the current version is 164. You'll see they released it on February 22nd. So again, this implements bug fixes and improvements. They don't say specifically, but there are a bunch of release notes about different things that they may have updated. Most of this is code related though. So if you want to go in and check this out, I'll link it in the description. But again, this is a test version of Safari to help you implement different web technologies a little bit better. Apple implemented communication safety in the United States for messages. It's an optional feature that helps protect children from seeing different images that might contain things that are explicit. Then they have the option to then share that information with an adult and make sure it's appropriate. It's an optional feature and is now rolling out to different places around the world. It's now available in Brazil, Sweden, Netherlands, Belgium, Japan, and South Korea, according to a news site called iCulture. This uses AI to determine whether or not it might be an explicit image. So it's not shared with Apple and you can enable it. It's disabled by default, but if you go into your settings and you go to screen time, and if you have family settings enabled, you'll select a child. It's only available for children. Go into communication safety and then you can enable this. Check for sensitive photos. You can improve communication safety. I turn that off but it's set up for my child just in case there might be an image like that. It's done all on device, not sent to Apple. So they discontinued their CSAM program that they were going to implement, which would have sent information to Apple. So this is completely private on your device and is rolling out in different places and will roll out to more places around the world in the future. The TV app gets a little bit of an update for MLS season pass. So if we go into this, let it load here just for a moment, we can go down and you'll see the MLS season pass. So this is a new option here where you can see different games and follow the whole season. T-Mobile also did a thing where they gave away a whole season pass of this on their T-Mobile Tuesdays. So that may or may not still be available. You can go in there. It has you log in to your Apple ID over here and then gives you a year of that MLS season pass if you want it. So that's something that's available now. Now a feature that we've been waiting for that was shown off with the initial release of iOS 16 was the ability to use Uber, but use live activities and the dynamic Island. That feature is now available. So if you're planning a ride using Uber, it's actually going to now give you information about that ride right in the dynamic Island. If you have an iPhone 14 pro or 14 pro max, or it's going to put it on your lock screen and give you information about the ride when it's going to arrive and that sort of information. So it's just a nice little update to the app and they've redesigned it as well. Spotify gets an update also. So if we go into Spotify here within Spotify, if you subscribe to premium, you'll now have a new AI powered DJ. So within your Spotify premium subscription. Now my brother actually has Spotify premium and wasn't seeing this just yet. I'll leave a link to the release in the description, but basically what it will do is have an AI powered DJ with a realistic voice that knows what you listen to and can play music you like or might like. So it's pretty great. It sounds like if it works like they advertise, 
I'll have to try it out. Maybe I'll subscribe and try this out myself as I haven't really seen anything like it before. Be sure to check out the video that they posted about it as it's, it's pretty different. I don't know how I feel about it yet as I haven't tried it, but hopefully it'll be something that really improves over time and improves suggestions for people. But let me know if you've used it and what you think about it in the comments below. One of the most popular games on iPhone for many years was Angry Birds. Rovio has recently renamed this to Rovio Classics AB. This is in an effort to differentiate itself from the newer games that they've been releasing, such as Angry Birds Friends, Angry Birds 2, as you can see here. So that's something they renamed recently. I don't know that that was necessary, but they felt it was necessary and renamed it, and it said it's back. So it's now available on the App Store. There's no in-app purchases. It's just 99 cents. So maybe they're just trying to re-release that and make a little extra extra profit on it. Now iOS 16.3 and iOS 16.3.1 have very important security updates in them, so I thought I'd bring this up just as I thought it was important. Apple added a new entry to the latest iOS 16.3.1 update. You can see that in the Apple security updates. And if we go down to iOS 16.3.1 and iPadOS 16.3.1 and scroll down, you'll see we now have three entries. Initially, we had two entries and then they updated this. I don't think we've seen them do that before, but as you can see, we have kernel updates, security, and WebKit. WebKit is the underlying code or foundation to Safari. And so, for example, under security, it says impact processing a maliciously crafted certificate may lead to a denial of service. To fix it, a denial of service issue was addressed with improved input validation. It's fairly vague, but does tell you that it's fixed and who actually submitted the issue overall. So those things are very important and definitely worth updating your phone for if you haven't already but we'll have new updates in the future. Hopefully in the near future, we'll have some new Pro app updates for iPad with maybe Final Cut Pro, Logic Pro. We currently have DaVinci Resolve. There's no reason Final Cut Pro couldn't make its way onto an M1 or M2 iPad with ease. So hopefully we see that very soon. We have 16 gigs of RAM and maybe, just maybe, finally with iPad OS 17 or maybe before then, we'll see some updated Pro apps. I'm really hoping we see something like that. And so those are all the major app updates this week. Of course, we're waiting for new iOS updates. And if there's anything else new that I might have missed, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. I did have a recent video before about the Dynamic Island and some things that make the best use of that. However, Google Maps is one of them that we should see updates here very soon to show in the dynamic island. So if there's anything else though you'd like me to cover in these app updates videos, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron, I'll see you next time.